Hello, welcome back to my blog, Edith English Literature. I am Ardhan Dude. Today, we are going to read Rabindranath Tagore's beautiful poem, Where the Mind is Without Fear. Rabindranath Tagore is such a name which don't need any such lengthy introduction. But to a reader who has not gone through Tagore's poems so vividly, I am just sharing few points regarding His Excellency, His Excellent Versifications. Tagore is a Nobel laureate whose writing is at once vivid with imagery, vivid with natural descriptions, vivid with the search of soul. Simply, his dictions are musical and his search for his own persona is akin to his devotional journey and his poetry particularly songs of herings are full of devotional meditations and his search for that Vaishnava culture or that culture of bowl sect is interfused. In his poetry we oftentimes find out the message to his father or prayer to his father. That father is his supreme lord or the lord of life or jivan devata. In sonartori or in other meditational writings, he is search for that supreme soul, Parampita or the father of excellence or father of his life is so much vivid that we often time derive in the conclusion that all of this kind of poetry or devotional poetry are in fact his contemplative or meditative notes on his philosophical understanding of the full circle of life. In 1913, Tagore won the Nobel Prize and that Nobel Prize had been uh, the full acclaim of his poetry as the first Asian writer who has been awarded with such. His writings, particularly his Gitanjali, has been translated into English and it has been titled as Song of Hardings. And this Song of Hardings or anthology has been uh, compiled by his two associates, W. V. Yeats and one Thought. In his writing, particularly Gitanjali, it has been a wide open door to the Western world, to the Western people to understand the devotional journey of a man who is more a saint, more a sadhu in its truest star in Indian philosophy. So in Tagore's poetry, this kind of devotional poems will find out a kind of vivid descriptions of inner workings of the mind, which is a contemplative and meditative prayer to the Supreme Lord, the Lord of Life, Jivan Devata. The interesting part of this poem is that it is a long sentence with several of the clauses. Sub clauses are the different sentences initially and the main clauses are at the final points. So when we read this poem, we find so many of the conditions and after completing all those clauses, we will find the vivid striking revelations at the end of the poem. This is written in three parts and the tone of the entire poem is devotional. And the theme of the poem is take out search for in that heaven where there is free will, freedom in its truest sense. So he is in search for true freedom both from his inner working as well as philosophical. The entire theme of this poem is in search for that freedom and the freedom he wishes that his countrymen will acquire and that freedom is essential for understanding the truest star, the truest meaning in its way, attain that glory of freedom which we all dream of. That is the freedom for not only of his country but freedom for the individual from the, all the clutches of negations, all the clutches of negative forces. So being positive, he is in search for truest freedom.
in defining freedom freedom of mind and freedom of soul is very essential Christ freedom is not being free from all the clutches of restriction by those materialistic persons but a twist freedom is the freeness of the will of the forces of soul and that is quite philosophical understanding in the first few lines it states where the mind is without fear and the head is held high so take or imagine such a heavenly country such a place which will turn into heaven if such freedom can be exercised which kind of freedom it states that where the mind is not burdened by or restricted by any of the clutches of captivity where the mind is free from any obligations of captivity of ignorance is the very meaning of the first line and the head is held high that means where one should not be ashamed of his deed when one's respect is always in its high acclaim when one should be meditated concentrated and appreciated by his good will will put his head high in respect where the knowledge is free where the world has not been broken up into fragments by narrow domestic walls so the narrow domestic walls are the very restrictions we are being ground by so many obligations of our earthly deeds or earthly deeds and doings and we sometimes are very contemplative on our own prospects we never think beyond us and that is the very restrictions that are the very domestic walls it states by we are not to be domesticated by the pretty concerns of us pretty concerns of our own uh, interest rather the greater interest of humanity greater interest of the world is the very clause that we should nourish and that is the very will of tagore and that will can only be exercised only when a person should be full of knowledge so a person who is gaining knowledge should not be restricted by this domestic walls this restricts these barriers beyond these barriers there is a call of knowledge there is a call of supreme truth and gaining that truth is the ultimate goal of education ultimate goal of knowledge he states that knowledge is free free from all kind of restrictions obligations and those pretty domestic restrictions personal desires by knowledge is free means it is free in its truest term it is akin to god it is akin to that acclaimed philosophy where there is no bound of learning as well as leading oneself and each and every person should oblige himself into that knowledge getting that knowledge is only possible when one who is free from all sort of restrictions all sort of prejudice of our existence but the concern is that our world is being broken by these domestic fragments domestic walls the world is like that of a fragment the humanities and the civilizations are broken by their own cultures by their own restricted principles by the religion by liking disliking and by manners but from the broad perspective of humanity we the civilization we the society of this world is unified one single one again tagot says where words come out from the depth of truth where tireless striving stretches its arm towards perfection where words come out of depth of truth truth is white and it is akin to god and it rests in heart when one's speech and one's action one's deed and one's utterance are parallel and when truth comes from the core of the heart which is never a black one 
which is always white as white as the luminous god is the very way of learning none of us is perfect but wishing to be perfect is the very goal of us is the very name of education so our education should be or our effort should be towards that cherished goal of being a perfect and that is striving that is effortful in that projected heaven where there is trace to the true education is like that of a an endless effort of us towards that perfection and that perfection or that striving to that perfection is the very motto of us or should be rather the motto of us so he states further where the clear stream of reason has not lost its way into the dreary desert sand of dead habit poet has compared the reason as like that of a stream a fountain and that stream goes in zigzag way in route our liking disliking in our way of thinking in our way of actions in our way of philosophical as well as political ideologies but these roads or these lanes or these by lanes or this zigzag way of stream sometimes lost into the desert into the dead habits of us dead habits or the customs of us are the very desert land where the stream or reasons lost its way so our reasoning our rightful reasoning should never be lost into the dead habits into that obsolete cliche obsolete prejudices a soul motivation of leading our stream flow or leading this stream in flow into that great ocean which is the vastness of the god which is the vastness of free will which is the vastness of knowledge which is akin to the lord of life the supremacy of father where the mind is led forward by the into ever widening thought and action tagor again prays to father of life jivan devata that the mind that lead forward by the god your will is the supremacy your will should lead our likes dislikes as well as our stream flow and reach that destination of vast ocean and the thought and action is ever widening the boundaries of the oceans a larger one and our stream should meet that wider actions wider thoughts and that wider action and thought is the ultimate goal of our education of our pursuit of knowledge so our pursuit of knowledge is for that widening spirit of thought and knowledge widening actions widening thoughts is for the purpose of our multiplicated desires of leading ourselves into that supremacy into that supreme ideological flag where from we can find out in defining terms the truth and the rights in terms of negating the ideologies of wrongs fouls misdeeds and make this world a beautiful one poet prays into the heaven of freedom my father let my country awake let this country which is still under the sickle of british rule needs the countrymen a twist to true knowledge which should be as free as vast as that of widening sea full of new thoughts widening thoughts and actions without any restrictions without any prejudices and that country or that imaginary state of mind is the very heaven of freedom so poet wishes to the lord of life to his jivan devata that he should lead this countryman this country in fact the world citizens 
into that freedom, into that heaven of freedom. So it reaches to the true freedom, which is not bound by body, earthly desires, which is only akin to broad humanity, which sees human as human, not judging by caste, creed, colors, religions, and other obligations. He wishes his countrymen to exercise that freedom. Both the country should be free, as well as the mind of his countrymen should be freed from all sort of obligations, prejudices, and restrictions. This beautiful poem by Tagore has taught us many things. What should be the ultimate goal of us to reach that freedom? how one should exercise that freedom. The poem is quite difficult one uh, in that sense that it defines structurally in a single sentence. The whole meaning of the poem is bisected into different clauses and first few clauses are the conditions by which he can make this world or this nation or the very mind of us free from all such prejudices that we often get restricted by. So if you have any questions regarding this poem and if you need further clarification to understand this poem, just pop up here, ask me any questions. I will try my best to give you an answer. Like, share and comment and obviously subscribe. Bye bye.